Hi guys, so we're going to do quadratics and radical functions. The first part of this lesson was just graphing quadratics, just getting you introduced to equations and how to use equations to graph. And I just focus on quadratics. Okay, um, now for quadratics, there are certain um, properties. Axis of symmetry. Now this is in standard form, right? This is standard form. And the axis of symmetry could be found using part of the quadratic formula, negative b over 2a. So therefore, using a equals 2, b equals negative 8, and c equals 3. The reason I like doing that is just to check myself, just to give me an extra step for checking. Okay, 8 over 4, which equals uh, 2. If you do not put x equals 2, you will be counted wrong, okay? Or I'll give you only a percentage of the marks. This is an axis of symmetry is a vertical line, okay? Let's start graphing my function. x equals 2, x equals 2. Now the vertex, the axis of symmetry is going to become my x. Now I am going to input 2 plus 3 into the function to figure it out. 2 times 4 minus 16 plus 3. 8 minus 16 plus 3. That's going to be, is it negative 5? Negative 5. So 2 comma negative 5 right there. Okay. What is the y intercept of that? Okay. The y intercept. And to graph, we need the vertex, a point on the left side of the axis, I mean, axis of symmetry, and a point on the right side of the axis of symmetry. And I can get this in standard form. It gives you the value of the y intercept as three. So I can just use that. Okay, and if I traveled one, two, here is my other point. There is my graph. Don't forget to put arrows. Concavity is concave up. The domain of is always all real numbers. The range of the function is going to be y such that y is an element of all real numbers. And y has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay? Good job, guys. Okay. Now, if you want to go ahead and label all your points, that's fine. I mean, that helps me out. 2, comma, negative 5. You can 4, comma, 3. And 0, comma, 3. And that's... That is a beautifully sketched graph right there, okay? Next, once again in standard form, so the axis of symmetry is going to be negative b over 2a. So a equals negative 3, b equals 12, c equals negative 7. So 12, negative 12, negative 12 over 2 times negative 3, which gives me negative 12 over negative 6, which gives me a 2. So x equals 2 is my axis of symmetry. Now, based on that negative, it's going to be concave down. Okay. And then uh, let's go ahead and figure out Let's go ahead and input the 2 into our function. Negative 3, 2 squared plus 12 times 2 minus 7. So that's going to give me a negative 3 times 4 plus 24 minus 7. Negative 12 plus 24 minus 7. And negative 12. Blah, blah, blah. I think that's going to be a 5. It's interesting. I picked two very similar graphs for you to graph. So my vertex is going to be 2, 5, okay? 
uh, let's go ahead and graph that two comma five right there. X equals two, two comma five. It's going to be concave down. My Y intercept is going to be negative seven right here, right here. So that's going to be zero comma negative seven. And that's going to be a four comma negative seven. There is this beautiful with arrows concave down parabola. The domain of the function is going to be x such that x is an element of all real numbers. The range of the function is going to be y such that y is an element of all real numbers. y has to be less than or equal to 5. Okay? Good job. Next, write the equation of the graph in standard form. Okay, so we have a, let's go ahead and write this in another color so you can see. We have a point here and a point here and another point. Notice that these are x-intercepts, but I have to write in standard form. But any form could be, it could be solved out or it could be, simplified as not simplified but actually like multiplied out as a standard form so i'm going to start with my um intercept form x minus p x minus q and then go ahead and put in let's go ahead and change that to y i'm going to need that later let's go ahead and put in my intercepts a plus three and x minus 1. And notice that I flipped the signs of those to put it in because the equation itself has that. And then also when you're solving for them, remember you set it equal to 0 and you have to bring that number to the other side. So x equals, this ends up becoming x equals negative 3 and this ends up becoming x equals 1. Okay, now I have to find a. So I have to use this point right here. So y equals, oh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and put in 3 as my y. And this is x and y. A, 0 plus 3, and a 0 uh, minus 1. So 3 equals a, 3 times negative 1. 3 equals negative 3a, divide both sides by negative 3 a equals negative 1. So we have f of x equals negative 1 times x plus 3, x minus 1. And I told you to write it in standard form. All you have to do is just multiply it out. I can multiply these two together or the last two together, doesn't matter. Okay, that's, um, I believe that's associative property. Okay, I'm going to multiply the two binomials together, x squared minus x minus 1 plus 3 is going to be a plus 2x minus 3. Distribute the negative sign, negative x squared minus 2x plus 3 would be my final answer. Okay, good job. Number four, the graph has shown below has an a value of 2. Write the equation of the graph. Write the equation of the graph in the most appropriate form. The vertical line is y equals negative 1. Oh, no, that's x equals. There was a typo. x equals negative 1. Okay, right here. That vertical line is x equals negative 1. Um, so let's see what would be. So I know... First of all, that that vertex is going to have a negative one. This is the axis of symmetry. Okay, I don't know the y value. Mm, let's see. I know that there is a value like this. It seems like that right there is the x and y coordinate. That is the c value, negative one. A c value meaning when it's written in standard form, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, 
uh, it says to write it in the most, mm, and it gives you the A value. I'm going to write it in vertex form. Okay. Let's go ahead and do Y equals A X minus H squared plus K. Um, and I said most appropriate form. And the reason is, is because, um, let's see the things that I can fill out. Okay. I can fill out H, right? Uh, I don't know K. Okay. Because that would be the Y value of the vertex. So this is the actual, that would be the K value. Okay. And then, uh, let's see, I know the A value. And then using this point, I know an X and Y value. So I just, I can find the K value using that. Okay. So let's go ahead and fill this out completely. The A value is going to be two. Okay. The X value is going to be zero, X and Y. This is going to be the H value minus plus one squared plus K. Okay. So negative one equals one two times one squared plus k and then negative one equals let's see one oh that's just two plus k so k is going to be negative three so my function in a vertex form two x plus one squared minus three Okay, that one took a little bit of thought, but I think we're okay. Okay, good job, guys. Okay, so write the domain and range of the function algebraically in set builder notation. Okay, remember, I told you um, that the radicand x minus 1 um, for a parent function f of x equals the square root of x. The domain of the function is going to be x is greater than or equal to zero, and the range of the function is going to be y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, um, the x is going to be whatever's in the radicand. So I'm going to take that radicand and I'm going to set it greater than or equal to zero, and then I'm going to solve x is greater than or equal to one. Okay, so that will determine the domain. The domain of the function is x such that x is all real numbers and x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay. And then I'm going to look at the, the range. This implies that if I take square root of x, square root of x is y. If y equals the square root of x and it's greater than or equal to 0, okay, let's start there for the range. Square root of x is greater than or equal to zero. Now let's see what happens to the square root, the radical. What kind of things happen to it? I'm going to pick this color. Okay, first of all, negative two gets multiplied on both sides. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative two. When you multiply both sides by negative two, also the inequality changes. Okay, and that just becomes zero. And then what did you do after that? You added five. So negative two square root of x plus five. And I could change this to an x minus one. It doesn't change anything. Let me go ahead and rewrite this. x minus one. That radical radicand only changes the domain. So negative two x minus one plus five. I'm going to do a plus 5 on both sides. So the entire y has to now be less than or equal to 5. So my range of the function is going to be y such that y is an element of all real numbers and y has to be less than or equal to 5. Okay, so these two points right here, the negative, the one, the one 
and the five give me my first point. The one and the five. And notice that the domain, I mean the range is going to be less than five, but the domain is going to be greater than uh, equal to one. So let's go ahead and find a point. I just need one more to be really honest. If I want to be like perfect, you know, these are just sketches of grass. Remember, we're not drawing grass. I just need one more point, but if you need to, you could put two more points. Okay, so I can put in a, let's put in a five. I'm going to put in a five. That's going to give me square root of five minus one is square root of four. Square root of four is two. Negative two times two is going to be negative four, and that's going to be a one. Okay, uh, next I could put a 10. Ten's not even on this graph. Okay, I can put an 8. 8 minus 1 is going to be 7. So negative square root of 7 plus 5. So I have a negative 2 and square root of 7 plus 5. That's going to be somewhere around negative 0 0.3 negative 0 0.3. So 5, 1, and 8 is going to be somewhere close to here. There it is, right here. Don't forget to put the arrow. Okay, good job. Let's look at the next one. What's inside of the radical, 4 minus x, greater than zero, that becomes the domain. Okay, subtract four, negative x is greater than or equal to negative four. Divide both sides or multiply both sides by negative. So x flip the inequality sign, four. So domain of this function is going to be x such that x is an element of all real numbers. x has to be less than or equal to four. Okay. Now, let's see, let's look at uh, the range. Now, we're going to start off with 4 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Let's see what happens to the, f the radical. You first multiply it by 2. So you're going to multiply 2 times 4, the radical itself, multiply both sides by 2, become 0. And then you're going to subtract 2. So we can determine that y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So the range of the function is going to be y such that y is all real numbers and y has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so let's take a look. That first point is going to be 4, negative 2. 4, negative 2 right here. Let's go ahead, try to pick some x values. x has to be less than or equal to 4. So I can put 0. Let's put 0. Okay, 2 times 4 minus 0 minus 2. So that's going to be 2 to the 4 minus 2. 2 times 2 minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, which is 2. 0, 2. Now, if I want to include another point, um, maybe I can do, uh, let's do 4 minus, I'm trying to figure out, 4, 6, 11. I'm trying to figure out a perfect square. I'm just so bad at this. Okay, uh, 16. 16. 20? No, that's not even going to fit. 9. 9 plus 4. 13? Let's try 13. Negative 13. Okay, negative 13, and then let's see, 2. 
times uh, 4 minus minus 13. So 2. No, that's not going to work. I'm so bad at this. Five, 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 five. 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 Let's put in 5. Negative 5. Negative five, nice, gives me a nine. Two times three minus two, that's six minus two, that's gonna be four. Negative five, four, negative five, four, right here. Ba bam connect the dots. Yes, put my arrow, there you go. Okay, and if you don't wanna put points, and if you don't want like, if you, in most cases on your test, if you put a clear point between the boxes, just like this, your, your, so your um, points are going to be integers, okay? I'm fine with that. But if it's an estimate and you don't put little coordinates on it, if you maybe did like, a, let's say you did like a negative four, no, I don't want, I could have put a negative four there too. No, I couldn't have. Let's put a negative four. If I put a negative four here, if I wanted to use negative four, I'm going to have four plus four in my radical. I'm going to have a square root of eight or two minus two. And you get some kind of estimate like, let's go ahead and put that in my calculator. Okay. Two times the square root of eight minus two. Okay, and you give me like a 3.7, and you graph that, negative 4, 3.7, okay, 3.7 somewhere here. That that point is an estimate. That That is not literally, like if you look, this point is literally in the intersection of those boxes, okay? If you don't put an estimate, you have to put it in the coordinates for it. So either you have to do negative 4 comma 3.7, or if you make a table like this, then you are all set. You don't even need this if you have a table like this. Okay, table works out perfectly. I can clearly see which points you used. Okay, good job. Uh, let's see. Next. Okay. Let's go ahead and take that radicand and make our domain. So x minus 2 is going to be greater than or equal to 0 because that's what the parent function tells us. So x has to be greater than or equal to 2. So the domain of the function is going to be x such that x is an element. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Keyboard is an element of all real numbers. X is greater than or equal to two. Let's do the range. The range, I'm gonna take the entire radical and I'm gonna set it greater than or equal to zero because that's what the parent function tells me. And then let's see what happens to the radical. It's getting multiplied by negative three. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative two. And in doing so, I have to flip my inequality sign. And then we have a subtracted by a minus 1. And if you feel comfortable writing it that way, that's fine. If not, another way to write that is negative 3, x minus 2, minus 1. Okay, so now we have the entire y is less than or equal to negative 1. So the range of the function, y such that y is an element of all real numbers, y is less than or equal to negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and indicate our first point there, which is at 2, negative 1, 2, negative 1 right here. Okay, and then we're going to need some points. Uh, I can put a 2 in. No, I already did that. Uh, okay, 2. It has to be greater than 2. So 6. 
6, and it's going to be negative 1 minus 3 times 6 minus 2, negative 1. And notice, we don't add those two together, guys. Okay, that's a no. Okay, uh, times negative 3. Multiplication comes first. 4, negative 1 times negative 3 times 2, negative 1 times negative 6, negative 7. 6, negative 7. And I can put a 4 in here. And that'll be 4, negative 1 minus 3, 2. Okay, where is my graphing calculator? Really, I'm not using this to graph at all. Negative 1 minus 3 times the square root of 2. Negative 5.24. I could have put a 1. I could have put a 3, actually. Let's just put all the points in there. Okay. Uh, so negative 5.2. Negative 4. Negative 5.2. Once again, that's kind of ambiguous. Like, I mean, that's an estimation. But once again, my table takes care of that problem. I can clearly see and grade it. Okay, if I put a 3 in, it's going to be give me a 1. And so it's just going to be a square root of 1, uh, which is you just take that, and that's going to be negative 4. So 3 and negative 4. Notice how this curve happens right here. Kind of like that. Okay, good job, guys. Next, okie dokie. So I'm going to take that erratic hand, set it greater than or equal to zero for the domain, solve for x, subtract 6, negative 2x greater than or equal to negative 6, divide by x, flip the inequality sign so you get that. So the domain of the function is going to be x, such that x is an element of all real numbers, less than or equal to 3. Now for the range, I'm going to start off with negative 2x plus 6, greater than or equal to 3. Let's see what's happening. We multiply both sides by 4 fifths. Multiplying it does not change anything about the range, okay? And then you take, you add one to it. Add one. Okay, so you get y is greater than or equal to one. Okay, uh, the range of the function y such that y is an element of all real numbers, y is greater than or equal to 1. Take that first value, 3 and 1, like that. That's the start. x and y, I know all the values have to be less than or equal to 3 that I'm going to test. So let's look at the function. Mm. I'm going to test, God, this is always so, oh, I could just test 1, right? Because that will take 1 plus 4 fifths, and then it'll just be negative 2 plus 6, square root of 4. And then you get 2 times 4 fifths plus 1, which will give you 8 fifths plus 1 which will give you 5 over 5, so 13 fifths. So it's 13 fifths, 6.5. Okay, that was going to be an opportunity for you to get extra points, but that went away. I might have just used my calculator, because once again, Ms. Alstrom is very bad with arithmetic. 
So 13 divided by 5, 2.6. Okay, so 1 and 2.6, which is going to be around there. Um, I can put in, let's see, let's go ahead and put in 4. I'm going to put in 4. Now, that's going to be undefined because that's going to be less than. So let's go ahead and put a 0. Okay, 1 plus 4 over 5. 2, negative 2 times x, that's going to take that and make it 0, plus 6. So the radicand is going to just be the square root of 6. And so I get 1 plus 4 divided by 5 times the square root of 6. 2, it's around 3. So when I put a 0, I get somewhere around 3. 0, 3. Okay. Um, it's starting to look like it's going to curve. Whoops. It's going to curve this way like this. Okay. Once again, the table. The value of the table. Okay. I think that's all for 2.2. Good job, guys.